Let's learn about chlorinated compounds. First, let's look at a brief history of chlorinated compound issues in the industry. In the 1970s, concerns about the effects of PCBs on the environment led to the elimination of their use in paper products. Then, in the 1980s, a link was made between elemental chlorine bleaching, using chlorine, with the presence of dioxins in the receiving environment downstream of pulp mills. Finally, in the 1990s, there was a worldwide abandonment of elemental chlorine bleaching in favor of technologies that instead use chlorine dioxide and non-chlorine containing chemicals. It is estimated that now only 1% of pulp worldwide is currently bleached using the historic approach of bleaching with chlorine, or Cl2. Now let's review the bleaching process. Lignin and cellulose fibers are parts of the tree and are made up of carbon-based molecules that look like this. Lignin is the substance that binds cellulose fibers together. It is removed, which is called delignification, during chemical pulping, or torn apart during mechanical pulping, in order for paper to be made. Bleaching is used to brighten or remove any lignin remaining with the pulp after the pulping process, and this improves certain paper characteristics. This removed lignin from the bleaching process represents a source of chemical reaction products that may be sent to the mill wastewater streams, which could have an environmental impact. Elemental chlorine, which was historically used as a pulp bleaching chemical, chemically reacts with lignin and other precursors, adding chlorine atoms, to create chlorinated organic byproducts, such as dioxin and AOX. Nowadays, elemental chlorine-free bleaching, known as ECF bleaching, is predominantly used around the world. It replaces elemental chlorine with chlorine dioxide, which delignifies and brightens pulp by oxidizing lignin, but does not add chlorine atoms onto lignin fragments. However, small amounts of elemental chlorine and other chlorine compounds formed during the chlorine dioxide bleaching process can react with degraded lignin to form a small amount of chlorinated organic compounds measured as AOX. Totally chlorine-free bleaching, known as TCF bleaching, is an approach that replaces all chlorine-based bleaching agents with oxygen-based bleaching agents, such as hydrogen peroxide and oxygen. This approach eliminates the inadvertent production of chlorinated compounds during bleaching. Both ECF and TCF bleaching can use additional processes to reduce the lignin content of pulps prior to bleaching, beyond the lignin reduction that occurs in the traditional pulping process. The two processes to do this are called extended cooking and oxygen delignification. Either one or both can be used prior to the bleach plant. The lignin removed prior to the bleach plant is recovered and burned as fuel in the mill, removing as much as possible prior to the bleach plant, thereby reducing the amount of bleaching that needs to be done. For TCF bleaching sequences, this type of extended delignification is a prerequisite because the chemicals used in TCF bleaching are less effective than those used in other types of bleaching sequences. It is possible to recover some of the filtrate or wastewater from the bleach plant so that it does not go to wastewater treatment. However, the degree to which this is possible is limited due to dissolved wood substances that are in these wastewaters, which can build up in the process and cause significant maintenance issues, additional volumes of filtrate to be processed, or other operational constraints. Any remaining organic material that does not get recovered within the mill is sent to wastewater treatment, where these organics are biologically treated, and typically removed at a rate between 90 and 95 percent, before the resulting effluent enters the environment. The selection of a bleaching process, and whether extended delignification will be applied, depends on the required paper quality, site-specific manufacturing conditions, economic feasibility, and meeting of environmental objectives. Let's talk about chlorinated compound trade-offs and co-benefits in relation to emissions to air. Historically, the use of elemental chlorine, or Cl2, for bleaching 
led to releases of chlorine and chloroform from the bleach plant. The change from using elemental chlorine to using chlorine dioxide-based bleaching, or ECF, dramatically reduced emissions of chlorine and chloroform. However, it does lead to a slight increase in emissions of chlorine dioxide. TCF bleaching eliminates all chlorine-related emissions. That said, the use of oxygen delignification, a prerequisite for TCF bleaching which significantly reduces the need to bleach the pulp, can increase the emissions of volatile organic compounds. When used with ECF bleaching, oxygen delignification similarly increases VOC emissions. A mill's approach to pulping and bleaching inherently includes consideration of what types of air emission control devices are needed to manage these emissions. Let's talk about chlorinated compound trade-offs and co-benefits in relation to discharges to water. Historically, the use of elemental chlorine for bleaching led to releases of chlorinated organic byproducts such as dioxins, which tend to be unreactive to wastewater treatment. The switch to ECF bleaching has led to significant reduction in these releases and to non-measurable levels of dioxin in final mill effluent. ECF bleaching, while leading to non-measurable levels of dioxin, does release very small levels of other chlorinated organics. TCF bleaching, given that it does not use any chlorinated compounds, completely eliminates chlorinated compounds from effluent. Having said that, releases of oxygen-demanding substances that are measured as BOD, or biochemical oxygen demand, and COD, or chemical oxygen demand, are still present, as they are more affected by the pulping operations at the mill and less affected by bleach plant operations. These, however, can be treated during wastewater treatment. How is the pulp and paper industry performing when it comes to chlorinated compound reduction? Since 1990, changes in bleaching technology have reduced dioxin discharges to a point where they cannot be detected in routine effluent monitoring tests. By the end of 2004, there had been a 90% decrease in the number of dioxin advisories downstream of pulp and paper mills in the U.S. There are limitations to further improvements. In North America, governments have built regulations that inherently require ECF bleaching, recognizing that the significant expense of adding processes such as extended cooking and oxygen delignification provide little additional benefit in terms of effluent and air quality. To learn more about chlorinated compounds, click on the links on this website.